for 30 years I've been angry about um, having been sent to federal prison. I did a prison term as a young man and I, and I never got over what happened to me and why that happened to me. And, I, and then I watched for 30 years as more people got sent to prison and more people. And uh, today there are over two million Americans under lock and key. It's a crime against humanity. I came of age in the 60s and um, was part of an entire generation that felt like uh, that uh, our country was going seriously in the wrong di direction and that, that really things were about to burst at seams. We called the band the MC5. Our band was a good way to express our uh, dissatisfaction, our anger, our frustration, um, and to help others express those feelings. We were on the cusp of being a big popular hit band, but I think that we were too much trouble. <laughs> we were too much trouble to ourselves because we were insane. We were arrested, we were indicted, uh, we had the FBI all up our ass. Um, and ultimately, um, I didn't survive the, the arc of the MC5. And I found um, the wonderful pain-killing properties of Jack Daniels and heroin, of uh, alcoholism and drug addiction. It was easier to get high every day than it was to deal with the collapse of my dreams as a young man and the collapse of my hopes and the collapse of my whole life. I entered a backwards world where bad was good. And I wish I could say that, you know, I, I got myself together in prison and I came out and I was a good guy, but prison didn't um, do that for me. It, it didn't actually help me. So. How can I do something about that? Um, I ran into a partner of mine, a man named Billy Bragg, a wonderful British singer-songwriter. And he was telling me about a nonprofit he had formed in England based on a Clash song called Jail Guitar Doors. He asked me, did I ever hear the song? And I said, yeah, I know the song. It's about me. When I went to prison, he, and he said, wait a minute. Oh, no, you're right. <laughs> he had forgotten. And so he told me what he discovered is that um, there are people that use music as rehabilitation in prisons in England, but they have no guitars. And a guy asked him if he could get him some guitars to work with the prisoners. And the more we talked about this, the more it seemed to me that although I'm skeptical of the calling idea, I should do this in America that I have one foot in music and I have one foot in prison still. And I still identify with people that are locked up. And so maybe I'm uniquely positioned to, to make uh, some kind of positive difference. I keep faith, I keep faith in you. So we launched a nonprofit in America, Jail Guitar Doors USA. And it's a musician run, musician organized nonprofit. And what we do is simple. We find people that work with prisoners, they'll use music as rehabilitation, and we provide them with guitars. The guitar, learning to express yourself in a song, um, can teach somebody a new, non-confrontational way to get complex ideas across, maybe about their family, or maybe how they ended up in prison. Um, it's a very powerful tool in starting to rebuild um, self-respect and dignity, to learn how to express yourself. Because prison is a great argument for um, uh, worthlessness, and creating something 
is a good argument against worthlessness.